exact routing options for wet dry and wet dry wet rigs. We're doing something a little bit different today. Rather than looking at a specific piece of gear and exploring that gear, uh, we are going to talk through, explain, and experiment around with a couple of pedalboard routing concepts. Specifically, we are taking a look at the wet dry rig and the wet dry wet rig. That's a tongue twister. I've gotten it wrong like 10 times filming so far. But that isn't to say that we aren't looking at specific gear. This video is actually sponsored by Pinstripe Pedals. Uh, if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you know that from the moment I got this DISO Plus right here, I absolutely have not used my, uh, my radial DI one time. It's completely vanished from all recording processes and all aspects of my channel for recording guitars. Uh, a really, really quick, super, uh, like light summary on why that is, is the DISO Plus is not a traditional DI, but is instead a dual line isolator. And the idea behind that is you don't need a DI for impedance matching and the resulting massive signal loss that causes you to have to run something like an ACS-1 or an Iridium much hotter than you otherwise would. This will actually keep that full volume, kind of that loudness that you hear in your headphones, uh, and we'll carry that on through to your DI. This will convert balanced or unbalanced lines to XLR. There's a high quality Jensen transformer in here that will eliminate ground hum. Uh, this thing's amazing. The, qu the quick pitch there is I, I love this box. Um, but I was chatting with the fine folks at Pinstripe over the last couple months. Uh, we had a call a little while after I got this where I basically had to get them on the phone and go, explain to me why this does what it does. Like explain to me why I'm enjoying this and getting so much more volume and clarity out of this than I am a traditional DI. And he, and he talked me through all the mathematics behind it and I only understand like 60% of it. But the important thing to know is this is what we're talking about today. And in those conversations, we started talking about wet dry and wet dry wet rigs. And we talked about the value of making a video explaining and walking through how to dial in a WD and a WDW rig. To that end, there are three important pieces of gear we are looking at today. The DISO Plus, the, the MIISO, the MISO. I did, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this bit again in like a half hour, I promise. Uh, these are the same thing. This one is stereo, this one is mono. That's the difference, that's what's important to know here. And thirdly, and thirdly, we are using the Walrus ACS-1 amp simulator. And the reason we're using the Walrus is because you can run two separate amplifiers on the left and right channels in this thing. During the first half of that intro video, you heard nothing but wet dry rigs, uh, which is to say a dry amplifier and a mono wet amplifier in parallel with one another, giving clarity to your dry signal while still giving you a lot of flexible routing and the ability to kind of separately EQ uh, compress, pan, and set levels on your delay and reverb. Now for the second half of that song, we converted our rig from a wet dry to a wet dry wet by only adding two extra patch cables, an XLR, and that mono DI box. Uh, very, very flexible. So, so let's go to our top down camera. Let's uh, walk through how we have the board set up for wet dry. And then we are going to play with some sound samples, experiment with how you would use wet dry. And then we will add those minimal pieces to change it into a fully fledged two amplifier wet dry wet rig with no added gear outside of a DI. So let's just get into it. So let's take a look at our current pedal board how things are hooked up, why they are hooked up the way that they are, and how I would approach dialing in a wet, dry tone with the pieces in front of us. Uh, I am playing a Jennings Voyager, and we are going from there into my tuner, my compressor, a boost pedal, and a blues breaker style pedal, the brown amplification carbon. Uh, very straightforward, standard uh, mono drive, dry effect pedal chain uh, into the mono input of the Walrus Audio ACS-1 amp sim. And the reason we're using the ACS-1 for this video specifically and not something like the Iridium or something else is because for the way that I am dialing things for that intro song, the ability to set separate amplifiers on your left and right actually comes in really, really handy. And we'll circle back to that in a second. Uh, from the left, from the ACS-1, we are taking the left output and sending it straight to our DISO Plus which then sends it off to our DAW as a mono line. Uh, this is giving us our dry guitar by itself. Uh, from the right output on the ACS-1, we are running to the Strymon El Capistan, uh, 
uh, and then mono from the L cap to the Strymon Big Sky, and then mono from the Big Sky to the right input on the DISO Plus, sending another mono signal down the other side of the stereo uh, dual line isolator uh, to our DAW. And just right now, everything exactly as it shows on the pedal board, uh, including the ACS-1 setup as just identical Fender amps on both sides, left and right, this is what that sounds like. So right there, there's a lot that you can do with that setup. Um, you have access to your dry tone, so you can kind of bring that wet down even further if you want it down further for better clarity right off the bat. So like, it can sound like this. Or you can really crank that wet effect and get something really washy for big, uh, like, ambient pads and stuff. And obviously I'm doing all of this in post in my DAW, but the same principles apply. If you're playing live somewhere or if you're tracking your guitar, um, if you're in your studio, you can go back and kind of balance out your wet and dry down the, down the line. Or if you're playing a live gig somewhere, front of house can decide exactly how much delay and reverb they have room for in the mix, which helps you stay turned up in the mix as well. And the other really beneficial thing about two mono signals like this is the ability to kind of pan things out, which can be really, really useful. So let's take our dry signal, send it hard left and take our wet and send it hard right, just to kind of give you a bigger sense of space without having to add a third input. And bring them back to mono, uh, kind of both of them centered up in the mix. And for a lot of people, this may be enough. Uh, one DI box, uh, very minimal, very straightforward cabling, just getting that dry signal and that wet signal in one DI with only one amp sim, it can be incredibly useful. You don't need a second full amplifier. You don't, need, you don't even need a second amp modeler. And you could do this exact same thing with uh, the Iridium or the Boss IR200 or any number of other uh, amp sims that have stereo outputs. However, we picked the ACS-1 for a reason in this video, and that is because you can dial your left and right amplifiers separately. So let's go ahead and, uh, as I said earlier, we are running a Fender amp on one side and, a Fender, and an identical Fender amp on the other side. Uh, I want a little bit more bite and a little bit more clarity on my dry tone, so let's go ahead and dial up a AC-30 style sound right now. Uh, I'm going to mute my wet signal in the DAW, so we're just going to hear dry, and we'll kind of like pull together a, a nice, a little bit more bite, a little bit more clarity um, dry guitar that will sit even more so out in front of our um, reverbs. already hear a lot more clarity and a lot more presence just by, by making that jump to an AC-30 from a Fender style amp. See how that re reacts to some breakup. <laughs> 
And now let's bring that wet, uh, that wet signal back in. There's also a really excellent balance that comes in uh, between those two, uh, and we can illustrate that by turning off our wet effects and just hearing how that Fender amp and that AC30 sit really nicely together, especially in a mono context. I tend to find that unmatched amps uh, panned hard left and right don't always sound really great to my ear, especially if they're kind of trying to do the same general purpose, especially like in a stereo rig. But for something like what we're doing here, I th actually think that it's really, really... Um, great and, 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 it, and it provides a lot of like sonic complexity. So yeah, that's wet dry with minimal cabling, no complicated routing, just an amp sim with a stereo output uh, that runs to two different sources. One, it goes through our wet effects and the other one goes straight to our console or our front of house. But say you want to make the jump from that to wet dry wet. Let's take a look at how that's done. So what we're going to do is make the jump from wet dry to wet dry wet with nothing more than two patch cables and a DI box. So literally all we have to do here is unplug the left output of the ACS-1, the dry send that we were sending from the DISO Plus and plug it instead into the MISO. And then we're going to add the right output from the LCAP into the equation, sending it to the right input of the Big Sky, changing both the LCAP and the Big Sky into stereo pedals and then running the right output of the Big Sky to that now absent left input on the DISO Plus. Let's give this a listen and see what's changed. thing about this kind of setup is not only can you have that independent control over your wet effects uh, in terms of level, but also because they are now sitting so far out in your mix and you're not kind of like being forced to, uh, to balance your wet and your dry down that center channel like you would traditionally do with a wet, dry, mono mix, uh, you can now get pretty out of hand with your wet effects and, uh, and, not, and not overblow things too much. So let's go ahead and dial up a nice, big, washy tone. Mm -hmm. 
Let's go ahead and take that dry signal out just so you can hear just how stark the difference is. This is also incredibly useful for things other than giant washy soundscapes while still being able to retain some dry guitar. You can dial in something a lot more reasonable uh, for rhythm guitar parts and like more like, you know, rock focused stuff using this kind of a setup. Let's dial up something a little bit more high gain and like tight sounding, but uh, but still make use of this this balancing act that we have access to with a wet, dry, wet setup. If you made it to the end here, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, I hope you found this really informative. I hope you found this really useful. Um, I love the work that Pinstripe does. I think that their gear is absolutely phenomenal. Um, the the DISO Plus has been my go-to DI box for like a year and a half now. I've taken it to gigs. I have flown with it. I have taken it everywhere, and I swear by it. It's it's so good. It's it, if you're the kind of person who's running things like an Iridium or a ACS1 or even the Universal Audio Aux Box amp topper that I actually do have behind me right there um, that doesn't have XLR outs. This thing is an absolute lifesaver. It is so useful both in the studio and in a live context. Uh, I'll include links down below uh, where you can order the mono line isolator or the dual line isolator. Uh, again, pinstripe pedals, thank you for uh, talking to me about doing this video. Uh, and to everybody else, thank you for joining and uh, I'll see you next time.